bench today and the new thing that we have going on. Oops, sorry about that. Um, we're going to be releasing this into service now on the evening of December 6th, so everyone will be able to access all of this new functionality as of December 7th. So the next CAB meeting after that is when we will officially be using the new CAB workbench. <clears throat> Please feel free to stop me if anyone has questions. Um, you don't have to wait till the end. If, just speak up. <clears throat> so just to start off, this email that I send out every week on Tuesday with the agenda for the CAB meeting, we're not going to send this anymore. Where There's going to be a way for you to check that in service now, who is on the agenda, and you'll get meeting requests especially. So those are the things we're going to go through. But just as a reminder, you will not see this email every week anymore going forward. <clears throat> So when you're looking to check the agenda or join a CAB meeting, um, it's really easy when you're in service now, you just type CAB into this Outlook Bar search area and then click the CAB workbench. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go through all of this in a live demo also. I just wanted to kind of run through the screens and some of the rules. Um, the, just kind of thinking through this, the normal CAB agenda, we'll be setting that on Friday since your tickets are due Thursday by 5 p.m. And then the emergency cab agenda will be set on Tuesday since that goes through um, looking at tickets through emergency changes through Sunday. So it kind of gives people that 24 hour period to get those logged so we can make sure we're reviewing everything within the timeline. So once you click into that cab workbench, you'll get this view of a calendar and it has all of our cab meetings on there. Um, this is test data, so ignore some of the weird test cabs that are out there for Thursday, but we will have two different cabs, one for normal changes and one for emergency changes. So we'll switch kind of halfway through the meeting between different workbenches. So you might get an invite for both of those or just one of those, depending on if you're on the agenda. So if you wanted to take a look at any of the, um, if the cab meeting to see if you're on the agenda before I send out the invites on Tuesday, you would just find your cab meeting, click on it, and then click open. Once you do, this is the view that you will see, and it's really basic right now because we haven't started the CAB meeting, um, but all of the changes will be listed on this left side here under this test change that we have. <clears throat> but once we actually have started the CAB meeting, a lot more of this will fill in. Um, so you'll see we're on this test change right here. Um, it's, this is, I am the change coordinator, it's an approval pending state, and then it gives lots of different details about the change over here. So this is really replacing the PDF report that I show during the CAB meeting. Instead, it's just gonna pull all of the change details right into the view so that everybody can see it, can review it. There, you can actually switch between these tabs up at the top to get different parts of the change ticket, like the planning has the implementation plan and the test plan and all of that. And then the incident details is really for the emergency changes specifically, so we can kind of look at the parent incident as we're reviewing the emergency change. Um, we'll still have a conference bridge for the CAB meeting, but you will need to have to be logged into the CAB workbench because I won't be doing a Skype share because I need everybody to be logged in and it takes attendance. I'll show you that how that works. Um, <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you're actually logged into that CAB workbench um, to get the view or at least called into the conference bridge so you can hear what's going on. <clears throat> um, as you can see, this is the change that we're actually talking about at that moment in CAB and then all the other changes that are coming up will be listed out down here. I just have one other one in this CAB meeting, but normally you'd see a bunch of different um, changes listed here. So we do have the ability to um, capture notes during the CAB meeting. Um, like this one, I happen to note for this change that we can't approve it. It's pending a business impact notification before we can approve the change. So we would just kind of skip through that change and then approve it later once we got what we needed. But um, it's just anything that happens during the CAB meeting if we need to note that. Um, those meeting notes are you know, typed in and viewable by everyone. And even after the CAB meeting, you can go back and review the meeting notes. Um, for each cab and what was written down. We also take attendance during that cab meeting. That's why it's important that everybody log into the workbench. So you'll be able, I'll be able to see who is on from my cab board and then the actual people who have a change. At, you know, they're the change coordinator of one of the changes in the review timeline will be listed as the attendees and I can make sure that everybody's online and pretty much ready to go and discuss their change. <clears throat> 
And like I was saying, once I set the CAB agenda each week, which is again, Friday for normal changes and Tuesday for emergency changes, I'll also have the CAB workbench send a meeting request to the specific people that are on the agenda for the CAB. So you might get a, a, a meeting request specifically for the normal change CAB review, and then also another one if you have an emergency change that's in the CAB review timeline. Um, what's nice about this is that you can actually just use the link within that meeting to go directly to that CAB portal instead of going through the steps that I just showed you if it's easier for you. Um, so it's kind of nice that it, that's in there. This is the same information as our CAB meeting has today, so that should look familiar. It's the same login number, um, and it does tell you the things that generally you're going to need to go over before and be ready for when you come to CAB kind of the questions that we ask and the things that we usually uh, cover with you. <clears throat> Just a few things to note. Um, one of the nice improvements is that the changes will be approved by the change management team and the CAB team during the meeting. So you're not having to wait after the CAB meeting that same day or even the next day or sometimes Friday for us to get all those approvals done for you. You'll have an immediate answer during CAB if you're, if you're approved and ready to go. Um, the one thing that is a little bit different from how we work today um, is the way that this workbench is currently um, configured is that if someone is not on the call when their change is called up for review, you're going to need to reschedule that change because we can't go back to it. So my only options are approve it or skip it. And if I skip it, it doesn't come back onto the agenda. So we're going to have to be really careful that everybody is ready to go for the cab on the line when their number is called. Um, and that's why we, we felt it was really important to get those meeting requests out to those who are on the agenda. Um, we will have an option later um, in a future version of ServiceNow um, that kind of eases this restriction for us. But until then, um, we're going to have to live with this one. So um, just please make sure that you're telling everybody to, to be on the cab line and ready to go when your change is called. It's going to be really important. <clears throat> Um, and just a note again, so if anybody was attending the cab in person in the room, please bring your laptop since we won't be screen sharing. I want to get that, that attendance list. Any questions before I dive into the demo? Okay. <clears throat> hey, Mandy. Yeah. Go ahead. Mandy, this is Rod. Hey. On the attendance, are we going to send out an OCC, an o, you know, a, 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 a communication with that so that people don't attend this training, they're going to know that? Yeah, I'm going to put it in the um, our process document. I'm going to have a job aid for this. Um, but, yeah, that's probably a good note, Rod, that we might need to do a little bit more so we don't lose anybody along the way. So thanks for that. Because yeah, you're going to. Yeah. <laughs> so I know people don't look at all the job aids all the time. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there's only 19 participants on this call, and I think there's a lot more people that need to be informed. So right. I'm oh, yeah. sure there's maybe more than one of these or something, or the you know the importance of people having to understand this is conveyed. Okay. Yep. We've got a bunch more communications coming out, and maybe I can highlight it in there as well. Um, and I'm making this uh, available, a video of this training, too, so I can keep trying to push that. So good point. One other point um, thought is maybe in the CAB agenda, the one that's already out to all of IT, yep. put a link to the job aid there so oh, everybody knows. Good. Yep, get them going now. Yep. Okay. Good feedback. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> all right, so I'm in service now. Um, I'm just in a development version of it, so kind of forgive if any bad data or weirdness shows up. Um, you guys all know how that goes. So. I would just click this cab workbench. It does open up another tab. And this is that calendar view we were looking at. So it's going to list out all my cab meetings going forward. Um, and this is where I can just kind of click into one. I can click open. <clears throat> and this is one that I had already uh, started, a cab meeting I had already started. So we can kind of look through and see, OK, here's the current change that I'm on. Here's all of the details about that change, all the planned start, short description, all of that good stuff. And then here's that planning tab. These are all just test changes, so it's bad data, but um, just wanted to get kind of 
how that's going to look. We're still developing this incident tab. So right now it's just showing the parent, but we also wanted to show like the priority of the incident, the short description, some of the things that we usually look at. Um, and then we'll be able to kind of click into this incident to see if the cause by change is filled out and all of those things that we normally talk about when we review emergencies. <clears throat> This is Meg Martin. I have a question. Go ahead, Meg. You said it takes attendance. What yep. do you have to do during the meeting to be um, so that you show up during for the attendance? Yep, you just have to be logged into this view. So you just when we were back here on this this home calendar page, once you kind of click into a cab meeting and open it, it's going to log you as attendant. That? I'm sorry. That's what, so that's what triggers that. Yep, exactly. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. And you can always kind of come up here and see um, who else is attending. Um, if you wanted to kind of look through, there's that meeting notes that I was talking about. <clears throat> and then if you forget the conference bridge, you can hit the conference Ooh. information and it pops it right up. This is all that stuff from the meeting request um, that you can look at. So that's the emergency change. The normal change isn't hugely different, but let's take a peek at it here. <clears throat> yeah, and obviously I started these cabs a long time ago, so it's saying I started 7,000 minutes ago. <laughs> so it does keep track at the overall cab level and of each change, how long we've been reviewing that change. Um, which is kind of nice. It keeps us on track. I've had I have it set a, a timer for each change, so that if we go over like a five minute discussion, it's going to turn red and kind of tell us that maybe it's time to move on. We've talked about this enough, and either we're approving it or or what based on what we know, and and that's going to be it. So, kind of same view here with the details that you can see. When I'm logged in as the change manager, I'm just in the normal IT user view right now. But when I'm logged in as the change manager, or, or when one of the cab members is logged in they'll actually see an approve or reject button here. So that's how we're gonna do that real time um, approval for you. And then me as the cab manager, I'll be able to next to this next change down here that's kind of waiting in the list. And you can um, change your view around here a little bit because sometimes once this one is approved, you won't see it in this list down here, it'll just be gone. But if you wanted to see it for some reason, you could change this drop down and just say show all agenda items and it would come back in the list if you wanted to take a peek at it for any reason, but that's why that five is showing here. That's that five minute timer that I talked about. <clears throat> so that's it for the cab workbench. Um, any other questions or things that aren't making sense at this time? What happens when you click next? What would I see as a cab just being logged into the cab? And sure. <clears throat> yeah, basically this change would go away and this one that's down here would move up to the primary spot and then all the details of that change would show in the panel over here. And the view on my, my PC would automatically change? Yes. Oh. Yep, it's all real time. So as I, as the cab manager, I'm scrolling through and getting through these changes, your view also updates. We're all, at the, we're all kind of in sync together. And you're going to approve it? Yep, I'll come in and, and once we have our conversation about it, I'll hit approve and then I'll say, hey, can one of the cab members approve? I'll give them a minute, let them approve, and then I'll hit next. And it does warn me if I try to hit next before it's approved, it'll say, ticket's not approved, don't go ahead yet. So it's got some nice little things built in to make sure we get those approvals done and, and on time. You scroll on the section of change. Yes. So we have assignment group, change coordinator, type, CIs. Um, we can't show, there's some tabs at the bottom for like additional affected CIs, outages, all sorts of stuff like that that aren't going to show in this view, but we tried to pull in as many fields as we could from the change so that we could help with the review. Yeah, this is nice. Yep. <clears throat> could I, could, so... You're no longer going to send out that email on Tuesday, letting every let all IT know in what changes are coming. Yep. But how would I know? I mean, is there a, a way that I can go and look ahead of time for maybe two cabs out or one cab out that list? Yep. You can you can go a little bit ahead, but that's where I was talking about. Like I refresh the agenda each week. So every Friday, I'm going to refresh the agenda for normal 
and every Tuesday I'm going to refresh for emergency. So nothing will be out there until I do those refreshes of the agenda and pull the changes in that kind of meet the criteria. So you can look a little bit out, but not real far. And remind me, when does the, the automatic email get sent um, if you're... On the agenda? Yeah. Yep, Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Yep, so I'll go in on Tuesday and, and invite everybody who has something on the agenda. All of IT is still invited to join, and that's why we still have the conference bridge and the other ways to, to access the CAB workbench, but we just wanted to make sure the attendees knew and could be there and we're ready for it because I think we do some manual reminding today so those will stop too so it'll be on your calendar and ready to go <clears throat> any other questions or concerns at this moment I'm, uh, I'm Andy Tarun here I saw some calendar at the bottom what does that represent yep so this calendar down here um, this isn't supposed to show up on every tab. Like I said, we're in development, but um, it does show up as a view that we can look at. We don't use a lot of um, some of the stuff that's available in ServiceNow. We do use the blackout. So for any of our blackouts and freezes, this would show if that change is in a blackout timeline. Like we have a test one looks like set up here that this yeah. change has triggered. Um, maintenance windows we don't really use today. Maybe eventually we'll get into a point where we're using those, um, where we can kind of designate a maintenance window for a particular CI or service or something like that. Um, but that's really all it's showing you is those two, you know, the blackout and the maintenance, if you're in that window. <clears throat> okay, and I also see uh, the test to check ticket. Does that represent the collision that might be there because of this change? Um, no, that's just the, the actual change we're reviewing. Actual change? Yeah. We would not have the collision for the others. It, okay. No, it doesn't, unfortunately. Not yet. This is, they're only on release two of the CAB workbench um, from the ServiceNow side, so they're constantly still putting new things out in each version. That's why I said next version will get some better options, and I'm sure they've gotten feedback from other CAB managers that you know, here's the things that we need and would like to see. And so um, I'm sure we'll get some improvements of this over time. <clears throat> All right, Mandy, thanks. You're welcome, Tarun. Anyone else? Okay, appreciate everybody's time today and please feel free to reach out any time between now and go live if you still have questions or you think of something later. Thank you. Yeah, I think in the... <coughs>